Admin Columns Pro is a WordPress plugin that lets you add in an almost unlimited number of incredibly useful columns to your posts, pages, and custom post types, as well as filtering, quick editing, inline editing, and way, way more. My name is Paul C, and this is a video about how I personally use Admin Columns Pro to manage my blog posts, custom post types, and products in WordPress. It's an incredible time saver with tons of features that will help you stay super productive. So let me show you what it can do for you. At its core, Admin Columns Pro lets you quickly and easily manage the columns displayed in all of your WordPress post types as well as the media library, but it can do so much more. Before we dig into those extra features though, let me just show you how easy it is to manage the information that's going to be displayed. So once you've gone ahead and installed Admin Columns Pro, to get access to all the settings, we simply need to go into the settings section in your dashboard and come down to Admin Columns. This then gives you access to all of the settings that you need. Now, if we take a look at the top, you can see, first of all, before we take a look at these four different sections, you can see there's a drop down select list. If we open that up, these are all of the different areas inside our dashboard we can affect with Admin Columns Pro. So things like the job section, which is a custom post type, pages and posts, which are normal WordPress options, and then things like categories, category types, taxonomies, tags, those kinds of things. All of those things are available to us to customize using Admin Columns Pro. Now, the Admin Columns free version gives you a lot of functionality and in a lot of ways you could use that to get by. But if you want the full power of Admin Columns, the pro version is highly recommended. And that's what I'm gonna be focusing on here today. Now we'll come back and take a look at the custom post type and how we can work with that. But for now, let's just stick to working with posts, which everybody that uses WordPress is going to have access to. And inside here, you can see this is showing us all the normal options, including our categories, the author, and so on. So right now, we can easily go ahead and just reorder these if we want to. So we might say we want to put the date up next to the title. We can just go ahead and position that where we want to. If we want to edit this, we can click the edit, and now we have full control over all the different aspects, the label, the width of this, whether we want to allow for exporting, sorting, inline editing, and so on and so forth. Many of these things we'll come back to and take a look at as we go through this video. If we take a look then over at the icons, you can see this is kind of replicating and telling us what is enabled currently. So we got a visual quick way of seeing. So things like the export option, the sorting, the inline editing, the enable editing, filtering, and so on. So if we make changes to this, for example, we set this so it's not exportable, we can select that, and you can see the export now becomes unavailable. So we can get a quick overview just by looking at these icons. You can also go ahead and click to expand this by using the little flyout on the top right hand side. So really easy to get used to dealing with all these kinds of things. Let's put the date back to where I originally wanted it. Now comments is something that I've got disabled so I don't need that inside here. So I can go ahead and I can just simply click remove and that gets rid of it. Now the nice thing is if we wanted to put that back we can simply go back in and add a column in. So if you accidentally remove something you can simply come over choose add a column and then we can go ahead and put that back in. You also have lots more options inside this add column section. So first of all, you've got the types. So you can see we've got action and you can see we've got things like title, author, categories, and so on. If you've got something like advanced custom fields installed, you can see we also have access to advanced custom fields and we can scroll down and there are lots and lots and lots of options inside here. So you can really customize this to your heart's content. You can go right the way down to see short codes for the different pages, if it's password protected, the short link, you can see yourself. There are lots and lots of options inside you. You've also then got the label, so you can customize this label should you want to, or you can go ahead and add an icon to this if you want to create a much more streamlined kind of layout. So let's just close this down. And let's go ahead and add in our first new column. Now, when you're working with posts or working with products with WooCommerce and so on, it makes it much easier to see what's going on by being able to put the featured image as part of a column. Well, we can do that. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's change this actions and we're gonna find the option for our featured image. We'll select that option. And you can see that now opens up the context-based options for that particular column type. We can change the name of this if we wanted to. So for example, if we were working with properties with a custom post type, we could change that to property image, whatever you wanted. You can then set the width of this, whether you wanna work in percentages or you wanna work in pixels. You can leave it automatic if you want to, which is the default. And then you can see we can choose how we want to display this, whether we want to display the actual image itself or just the file size information, which again could be really useful. You could create multiple columns, one with an image, one with a file size, perfect for a portfolio if you're a photographer or something. We'll leave that set as image. 
then you can customize the size that will be displayed. We can open this up and you can see we can choose from all the default options as part of WordPress and the theme you may have installed. Let's go ahead and leave that set to custom size. And then if we want to, we can adjust the values underneath. But 60 pixels is perfectly fine. Then we can just choose whether we want to enable this column to have any of these features. Do we want to allow it to be exportable? Do we want to sort it? Do we want to allow inline editing, bulk editing, smart filtering and filtering? So you can set these up to whatever you want. So in this example, sorting doesn't make a lot of sense. So we can set that to be no. Inline editing could be useful if we enable it. So we can also select that. And if we want to do bulk editing, smart filtering and so on. So bulk editing will set to no and smart filtering will also set to no. Now, if you're ever unsure of any of these, you can see we've got this little help tool tip that we can just mouse over and it'll show us exactly what's going on, what this setting is actually there for and how to use it. And if you want more information, you can simply click on the learn more to get the full documentation on that specific feature. OK, so let's leave that there and just click on the update option. We'll close this down and we we'll reposition it so it's the first item inside here. So let's just drag that into position, click update and we are done. Now we'll come back to the settings and things a little later. Let's just take a look now at exactly what's happened where we've included that new column. Let's go ahead and view that section now. And you can see we now have the featured image in its own dedicated column right at the beginning. So already it makes it a lot easier. You'll also notice that we have some extra options at the top. We've got inline editing because we've got that enabled. All we need to do is select that and we can start to inline edit. We'll come back to that a little later. We'll disable it for now. You can export this as a CSV so we can simply select all or any of the records we want and export that. Again, we'll come back to that a little later. We can add filters inside here and we can also just filter based upon these normal options. And we can click the cog icon to just simply take us back to editing this inside the admin columns settings. And there we go. So we're back inside you. So now we can make any changes we want to this. When you want to manage who can actually access your content structure, you can use the conditions in Admin Columns Pro. So let's take a look at how easy it is to set these up with some additional settings included. So the user roles and the conditional options are really useful when you want to fine tune exactly who has access to various different features inside your dashboard. So if we take a look at the settings underneath the post section, you can see we've got conditionals and we've got two really simple options. We can choose the rules for what role is going to be associated with access to this. So you can see we can set up for administrator through subscriber, but if you have additional custom roles associated with your website or you're using something like WooCommerce, which has its own dedicated roles for shop and so on, they'll be listed inside here as well. So you can see you can easily go in and set up who has access. So make this column set available only for specific user roles. So we may say we only want administrator and editor, and then any authors, contributors, or subscribers will not have access to those features. Simple as that. You may want to get even more granular and set up exactly what user can have access to this. So you can click and we can search for users inside there and we can go ahead and start adding users in. So at the moment, there's only one person, which is an administrator, which is me in this test website. So really easy to do, but great to add in there should you want to control what they can access. So the conditions we've got are great, but we've also got more options inside here, which is where we can control exactly what's going to be displayed or hidden on screen. And you can see there's a long list of options. So things like the inline editing, bulk editing, filters, and so on. So if you don't want these to be available on this particular post type, whether it's posts, pages, or a custom post type, you can simply check the items you don't want. Really easy, just check them, save, and they will be hidden on screen. It's pretty cool. You've also got then some basic preferences. So you can set this up for horizontal scrolling. So if you have really complex layouts with multiple columns that just won't fit on one single screen, you can set that up to allow people to scroll horizontally just to give them more access to more real estate on screen. Again, really, really useful. And then finally, you can set up the default sorting. So you can see if you've got sorting type, we can set this on title, author, categories, and so on. And then you can set it to be ascending or descending. So you can manage exactly what order things can be displayed in, which out of the box, WordPress isn't particularly great at. So you may want to just set this up to be something like the date to be descending, ascending, whatever kind of works for you. And then if you're working with filters, you can also go ahead and apply pre-applied filters to this particular listing. Great if you only want to sort of show certain records really useful. So tons of really useful options inside this set in section. When you have a site with a lot of information, being able to filter is a really important function. While WordPress offers some basic filtering, 
we can do so much more with Admin Columns Pro. Now, as we've already seen, it's very easy to enable filtering options as part of Admin Columns Pro. And you can see all the options are available inside here. So you can set things up to be filterable. And once you enable the smart filtering and so on, these columns become available to you then inside the actual section itself. So again, let's go over to view the post section. And inside here, you can see we've got this add filter option. If we click on this, this now gives us the ability to create our own custom filters on top of what we already have straight out of the box, like the dates, the categories, and so on. So what you can do now is you can select the title, author, categories, and so on. So these are the fields that we've set up to be able to be used inside these smart filters. And we can say that we want the author, for example, is, and then we can choose something on there. So we can then search for the author and we can just click and choose the author. So we've now created a more advanced filter, which can then work in conjunction with the dates, categories, tags, and so on. So really, really powerful doing this kind of thing. And you can see, we can save these filters as well. So once we've done this, we can say, save the filter. We'll give this a name. We'll just say filter by author. Do you want to make this available to all the users of your site? Obviously within the confines of who has access to these features. We'll leave that as it is and we'll just say save. And we've now created a filter. So we can stack multiple filters to make going back and reusing those time and time again really quick and easy. We can simply select the filter and it will be back for us. So let's clear what we currently have on here to put everything back to normal. So we just got nothing applied. We can simply come back over, hit filter by author and that will now go ahead and automatically add that in and filter based upon those parameters. Really, really useful. Sticking with filtering for your data, there are times you want to export your content and we can easily do that. But not only can we export the data, we can also choose what to export as well as create filters and export only the data that matches our filtered results. So with any of our filters enabled, we can go ahead and select all the items inside that filtered list. And you can see we can now go ahead and we can export these. So we can export it to a CSV file, and then we now have a full list all saved as a CSV file based upon that filter. So again, another really great way of being able to export your data, but only the data you actually need. Now there's another method and how you can actually export data. Let's come back into the column settings. Let's go over to the tools option. And inside there, you can see there's our posts. So we've got jobs and we've got posts. One's a custom post type, one's a normal post type. What we can do is we can select this and we can export that now as a JSON file if we want to. And once we've exported that, we can then import that into any Admin Columns Pro setup on any other website. So you can easily export your data, including custom fields and so on, and then just pull that in by using the import option and it'll put in that JSON file for you. So again, really, really useful to have that option inside Admin Columns Pro. Now, anything that makes managing content easier is a welcome addition and the ability to inline edit our content is certainly a useful and included option. So let's take a look at how that all works. Now, one area that's incredibly useful inside Admin Columns Pro is inline editing. We select that option. We come out to any of these columns. You can see we get a little pencil anywhere we can edit it. So for example, if I want to change the title of this, I can simply click and I can now go ahead and I can change that. So let's just remove that little extra piece there, hit the check mark, and that's now updated. Pretty cool. And we can do that with any of these. We can edit the category. You can see we can go ahead and we'll say we want to add that to another category and we'll just check that. So now that's been added in there. You want to change the featured image, you can do that as well. So providing you've got any of these options set up to be editable, you can do it through the inline editing. You'll also notice that you've got this option to undo what you did. So for example, if I don't want to do that, I put the wrong category inside there, I can simply undo that. And there we go. That's now undone the changes I made. So incredibly easy. Now, inline editing is super cool, but bulk editing powers that up even more so. Let's just select all of our records as an example. You can see this now pulls up the bulk edit option. So if I want to, I can bulk edit all of the selected records. So I can bulk edit the title, the author, categories, and so on. So I could just click on bulk edit, and you can see I've got replace with, add, or remove. So we'll say, let's add. We're going to come down, and we're going to search then, and we're going to say we're going to add all of these to the education category. Click update. Are we sure? Yes. So we don't make a mistake. And you can see that now goes through and does all six entries. I can say done and deselect all. And now they've all been added to the education category. 
If I only wanted to do a couple of records, I can select the ones that I want. And you see, once I select more than one record, it opens up the bulk edit option and I can do exactly the same thing, but now only affecting the three selected entries. Just really cool and really easy. Now, thankfully, we're not limited to only editing our content. We can also directly add new entries with the quick add option. So let's take that for a spin next. So how do we get access to the option for quick adding? Well, at the moment, that's been disabled or hidden inside this particular post section. So let's uncheck that and just simply update. So now we have access to the quick add. We'll hop back over and now we have the option to quick add. You can see there's quick add at the top. So once we click on that, that automatically inserts a new row for us and we can now just go ahead and use that inline editing to do what we want. So let's edit this. We'll find an image. We'll give this a title. The author is perfectly fine. We'll set the category. And if we want to set any tags, we can do that inside here as well. There you go. We've now added in our new post. So we can go ahead and we can edit that and we can make whatever changes we want to it. So really quick and really easy to work with this quick add option. Now, Admin Colors Pro offers a lot of tools and options, but if you're looking for more, there's support for several popular tools through the use of several add-ons that are available. So let's take a quick look at what's included. I'm gonna come back into our settings and into admin columns. We're gonna open the add-ons column. And inside there, this is showing you all of the different add-ons you get access to to work admin columns alongside these various different plugins. So you can see I've got the advanced custom fields option enabled and active because I'm using ACF in this example. But you can see there are lots more options if you use BuddyPress, Gravity Forms, Ninja Forms, Pods, Metabox, WooCommerce, Yoast SEO and so on. Then you have access to integrating Admin Columns Pro with those particular tools. Now, as I've already mentioned, I've been using and recommending admin columns for several years, and the pro version adds a lot of key functionality over the already pretty impressive free version. From a price point of view, the single site license is a little on the steep side, especially if you just intend to use it on your own projects that may not generate you any revenue. However, when you step up to the five or unlimited license options, the per unit price drops considerably. If you're building sites for clients and they have a need for the additional functionality provided, it's the client who will be footing the bill anyway. Now, I suggest trying the free version before stepping up to the pro version to get a feel for how admin columns can help improve your WordPress admin. And if you find you need more or specific features only available in the pro plan, jump up to that when you're ready. Now, as always, all the relevant links are in the description below. If you got value from this video, well, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, well, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice as that works pretty well too. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts and until next time, take care.